Amongst the thousands of characters who have strutted their stuff on the streets of Springfield, there are undoubtedly some who we'd never want to see again, but also others that definitely need a comeback. And for some reason or another, they either disappeared or weren't utilized to their full potential. Was it that they were shunned to Mr. Burns' mystery box, never to be seen again, or was it something else entirely? Well, there's only one way to find out. I'm Lydia from The Simpsons Theory, and this is 10 Great Simpsons Characters That Need a Comeback. Now, before we make a start, if you'd like more content that furthers Springfield, then I have another channel called Screen Portal. Over there, I've explored the various timelines of Family Guy, Futurama, and South Park. And for you grading fans, I've just released the complete timeline of Professor Farnsworth. So go on, click on the link in the pinned comments and watch it after this video. Number 10, Jessica Lovejoy. The Lovejoy's rebellious daughter first appeared back in season six as Bart's girlfriend. She took a liking for Bart's troublesome dude and most likely used him as an outlet for her pious upbringing. You're bad and I like it. And Bart Simpson, always one to fall for the bad girls, was firmly under her spell. She's like a milk Dudley's. Sweet on the outside, poison on the inside. But he soon realized that she was a bit too much for even him, by getting him to do such things like pulling the school's fire alarm. However, these seemingly innocent pranks turned into something really quite sinister, when she steals the church collection plate and blames the whole thing on Bart. Bewitched under her spell, it's his sister that reveals the truth to everyone in the church, outing her by revealing the stolen cash underneath her mattress. But her hypnotic powers didn't falter, even at the end of the episode, by getting the Bartman to complete her punishment by scrubbing the church's steps. Um, would you finish scrubbing these steps for me? Will I? I love the way there was something really quite dark about Jessica, in that she wasn't just bad like Gina Vendetti, or as charming as Laura Powers, she used Bart for her own gains. Remember, I'm the sweet, perfect minister's daughter, and you're just yellow trash. Now, we do see her appear a handful of times since then, but unfortunately in brief, non-speaking roles. The most recent being in season 33, where we find out that she has been put on medication to stop her troublesome ways. That's what you acted like before the medicine. I would love to see her again in a future themed episode like Barthood, where we find out how she evolved from this dangerous kid. Now logistically, to bring Jessica back, it would be pretty hard, seeing as she was voiced by the amazing Meryl Streep. But if they manage to get Glenn Close back to voice Mona Simpson for several episodes, then maybe they could get Streep in to record a few short sessions. She perfectly captured that mix of mischief and innocence, and I'd just really love to see her return. Number 9, Lucille Butskowski. This Simpsons OG was the criminal thief moonlighting as a babysitter, making her first appearance all the way back in the very first season. Hired to babysit the troublesome Simpsons kids, she tied them up instead to loot the house. But the crafty kids did manage to escape, knocking her out completely. You'll find as I run through this list that there are quite a few bad guys, but it's mostly because they are just so, so fun. And aside from Mr. Burns and Sideshow Bob, there aren't that many wholly bad returning characters, and I think we just need some more female villains. Time to brush your teeth, wash your face, and say your prayers. But we are treated to a glimpse of her a few seasons later. We see that she's now a patient at the Carmwood Mental Hospital, along with another Simpsons reject. Dinks, it's dinks, it's dinks. Now, Lucille absolutely terrified the frink out of me as a kid. She just loomed over the kids in such a menacing way. As a returning character, she could have been the one figure that haunted the kids, but pandered to the parents, making her unassuming, but even more so sinister. Number 8, Ruth Powers. Ruth and Laura Powers moved in next to the Simpsons in season 4's New Kid on the Block, 
Bob was instantly smitten with the daughter Laura, vowing to never wash his hand after she spat on it. But I personally prefer the episode Marge and the Lamb, where Marge and Ruth become the best of friends, as Marge admired Ruth's devil-may-care attitude, vastly different from the gals she normally hangs out with. The two of them together would go on a Thelma and Louise-style cross-country road trip together, but their stint with adventure was stunted when pursued by the Popo. But do not be mistaken, we do see her a fair few times throughout the later seasons, and I'll put emphasis on the C, as we rarely hear her interact in the show. That is until we see her buffed up and roided as a bodybuilder. I got this body in prison. I was Miss Mexican Mafia three years in a row. And ever the one to push Marge to her limit, Marge takes steroids too, causing real roid rage. Despite living right next door, we rarely see the Powers family again. They even made a joke about it in a recent Simpsons episode. You haven't stopped by to say hello in 25 years, and I live next door. It was actually this scene that gave me the idea to make this list, and although her appearance was only brief, it was great seeing the forgotten neighbor once more. And perhaps she'd be a suitable candidate for a relationship with everyone's favorite neighbor Reno Flanders. Ned is now a two-time widower, and Ruth herself is divorced and single. I want to be fixed up with one of your friends as soon as you can arrange it. But at the same time, I love that there's a tough single mother out there who knows herself and is pretty badass too. Number 7. Mindy Simmons Mindy was a striking lady with hair touched by fire and first appeared in Season 5's The Last Temptation of Homer. What's the matter? Haven't you never seen a naked chick riding a clam before? Voiced by Michelle Pfeiffer, she worked alongside Homer at the nuclear power plant. And aside from their careers, they shared a whole lot in common. Double glaze. Her favorite things included donuts, footlong chili dogs, duff, and napping during work. These similarities, along with her Venus-like presence, drew Homer in, but he knew this was a bit naughty, so he desperately avoided any opportunity to cross paths with her. I just pushed the button for the stimulator. I mean elevator. But Cupid came in a weird form of Mr. Burns, and the two were sent away to the energy convention in Capital City. Again, he attempted to avoid any temptation, but when a fortune cookie tells him to pursue with a new love, he finally gives in. Now back at the hotel, they share a kiss, but luckily Homer decides to stay faithful to Marge. But personally, even if Marge wouldn't, I'd love to see Mindy return. We saw the return of another one of Homer's love interests in past seasons, called Lurleen Lumpkin. So why the hell not Mindy? Number 6. Mary Spuckler We discussed the devious Jessica Lovejoy, now let's discuss her complete opposite, Mary Spuckler. Voiced by Zoe Deschanel, Mary first appeared when forced to marry Bart in order to save Luther Cow. We always figured someday Mary would marry, that's why we called her Mary. The marriage didn't go ahead, but hints of their attraction did, spanning across the show. Her kindness, warmth, and intelligence stood out amongst Cletus's many other kids, therefore allowing herself to be a standalone strong character. She was a talented musician with a drive that could have really benefited Bart, combined with her kindness and warmth, therefore creating a genuine and plausible match for everyone's favorite spiky-haired bad boy. Now, she has been featured in other episodes, including Moonshine River and Love is a Many Splintered Thing. Since then, she's only really served as a minor character, which bewilders the hell out of me. And she does really seem to be the one that Bart really fell for, so I'd love to see her return. But maybe, just maybe, she really is the one that got away. If any girl tries to fix you, let him because you got a couple of big problems, but mostly you're great. Number five, Princess Penelope. Voiced by Anne Hathaway, Princess Penelope is the children's show host who briefly took over from Krusty the Clown in the episode Once Upon a Time in Springfield. 
When the network's producers find that they are losing their female audience, they bring on Penelope as his new co-star. But she ends up overshadowing him and therefore becoming a whole lot more popular. Annoyed over her stealing his limelight, a furious Krusty goes to confront her, but she surprises him by confessing she's always been a fan and that she actually loves him. <laughs> The two then start dating and Krusty even pops the question, but during the ceremony Krusty realises that he's just not good enough for her and calls off the entire marriage. Princess, you're the only woman I care about enough to ditch at the altar. Heartbroken, Penelope travels to Paris to sing the blues on her guitar. During a lonely walk over a bridge, she notices Krusty swimming in the canal. He tells her that he's made a big mistake and he wants to be with her after all, kissing before drifting down the canal together. Now here it seemed as though the creators were looking at setting up a happy ending for Krusty and that Penelope may return, but alas we haven't seen her since. Her disappearance is most likely due to Anne Hathaway's busy busy schedule, the one drawback from using celebrities as characters rather than cameos. But even so, it's so odd to leave Krusty and us on a cliffhanger without any follow up at all. Are they still together? Did they break up? Did she find out what was in a Krusty Burger? Come on guys, it's been over 10 years, just give us an answer already. Number 4 Cecil Cecil is Sideshow Bob's cunning younger brother who first appeared in the season 8 episode Brother from Another Series. Hello brother, I'm happy to see you. Cecil just bounced off of Bob's witty remarks effortlessly and was a welcome new addition to Sideshow Bob's family. The four years at Clown College. I'll thank you not to refer to Princeton that way. And what made it even better was that the voice actors played another pair of fictional brothers in the show Frasier. Actor David Hyde Pierce acted alongside long-term voice of Bob, Kelsey Grammer. It was a stroke of genius to have these two play against each other. Cecil was even in many ways far more intelligent than Bob and less likely to fall for Bart's tricks. But when he tried to blow up the dam and destroy Springfield, Bob and the Simpsons kids finally worked together and so sent Cecil off to jail along with Innocent Bob, where they continued to bicker like brothers, fighting over the top bunk. His next appearance came in the season 19 episode Funeral for a Fiend, where he, alongside his parents, sister-in-law and nephew, faced Bob's death to finally get sweet revenge on Bart. And it was my flawless performance as the grieving brother that sealed the deal. However, their dastardly plot was foiled once again and so they were all carted off to the slammer. And that was the final appearance of Cecil and the entire Terwilliger family. All except for Bob of course, we haven't even seen Bob's wife or son again, despite Bob himself appearing in quite a few episodes since. But personally, I'd love to see the entire Terwilliger family return, even if it's just for one more time. Number 3 Hank Scorpio Sure, he's a supervillain hell bent on taking over the world, but he does offer free dental care and cute little moving hampers. Let's face it, who wouldn't like a boss like Hank? When you need sugar for your coffee, he's got you. Sorry, it's not in packages. Want some cream? Eh, uh, no. When you need a hammock, he tells you the best places to go. It's the hammock complex down on third. Oh, the hammock district. That's right. And I don't give a flying frink if he's evil. I'd happily work for the Globex Corporation just for a man like Hank. When Homer Simpson achieved a high paying job for said company in the episode You Only Move Twice, Scorpio showed himself to be the complete opposite of Mr. Burns. He was kind to his employees and was an awesome boss. Ever see a guy say goodbye to a shoe? Yes, once. Unfortunately, at the end of the episode, when Homer quit his amazing job for the sake of his family's happiness to move back to Springfield, we find that Hank has successfully taken over the East Coast and therefore gifted Homer with the Denver Broncos. Come on, what a nice guy. Aside from a quick opening credits appearance, it was this or a Porsche. 
We haven't seen him ever since. He almost appeared as the villain in the Simpsons movie until he was replaced by Russ Cargill, also voiced by Albert Brooks. My name is Russ Cargill and I'm head of the EPA. Now apparently this was because the producers felt that Hank was too nice to be the big evil guy in their movie. And they're not wrong, I can't see him sealing Springfield underneath that big dome, especially with BFF Homer underneath. Now alright alright, maybe he is best left as a one time character, he was so memorable and oh so iconic that a second appearance might just ruin that, but I don't care, I want him back, I love him. Now, before I talk about the final two, do me a quick favor and click that subscribe button. Every person who clicks that red button really, really helps me out as it sends a message straight to YouTube, letting them know that you like my content and I can keep producing more Simpsons videos just for you. So thank you. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Number two, Her Powell. Homer's long lost half brother first appeared in season 2's Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? When Abe tells his son that he has a half brother, Homer tracks him down to surprise him and finds out that he is a successful businessman who owns a car company too. Herb is equally pleased to see Homer too, finally having a family. The two of them immediately get on, and Herb hires Homer to build his own car. But this was a gigantic mistake, as despite his engineer's warnings, Homer designs the most expensive and hideous car ever to exist. I'm ruined! <laughs> and understandably put a damper on him and Homer's relationship. As far as I'm concerned, I have no brother. In a later episode, we find that Herb is now living on the streets, but he has an idea to get back on top, but he needs his brother's help. Herb? <coughs> Homer gives his brother a loan to start his own baby translator business, and it literally pays off, and so Herb is rich again. Now, the last we heard from Herb was when Homer tried to call him to ask for some money. Hi, you reached Herb Powell. I'm poor again. D. So, how did Herb lose all of his money again? Where has he been all of this time? Plus, he is voiced by the awesome Danny DeVito, and who just wouldn't want him back? I miss Danny DeVito. Number one, a poo. Now, come on, don't be shy. You knew this one was coming, didn't you? Not that he needs any introduction, but Apu is the convenience store manager at the Quickie Mart, always bidding his customers farewell with a cheery... I mean, thank y'all, come again. Aside from the Simpsons family, Apu was one of the main secretary characters in the show. We saw just how hard he worked to come to America, get married, and have Octopolis too. But Apu has been strangely absent for the last few years appearing only rarely in the background scenes. So what the hell happened? Well, in 2017, the documentary The Problem with a Poo was released. In it, comedian Harry Kondabolu explored the negative stereotypes associated with Indians and how they are portrayed in Western media, focusing particularly on the portrayal of a poo. In response to this documentary, actor Hank Azaria stepped away from voicing a poo, stating that he won't be doing the voice anymore unless there's some way to transition it or something. Now, I love a poo. He's had so many stand up moments, like when he lost the Quickie Mart and how he had to negotiate his feelings with his faith, even introducing Lisa to vegetarianism. I learned long ago, Lisa, to tolerate others rather than forcing my beliefs on them. But I do completely understand why some will take offence to his character. It's a difficult situation because almost every single character in the show are stereotypes and the Simpsons are who they are for jibing at every single type of stereotype. Now personally, I think that the only way Apu can come back is that if they get a new person to voice him. They've already replaced the voice actors of Carl and Dr. Hibbert, so why not Apu? Now, I know a lot of you would prefer to keep Hank Azaria as the voice of Apu, 
but the actor himself has chosen not to participate. It's his choice at the end of the day, and he's not changing his mind anytime soon. So that leaves us with two options. Remove him from the show completely or get an entirely new voice actor. In 2020, the show's producers announced that The Simpsons will no longer have non-white characters voiced by white actors. So I think it is possible for someone with an Indian heritage to voice a poo instead, as long as you keep the essence of who he is, rather than whose voice he has. But come on, I want to know what you think. Do you think a poo should come back? And which Simpsons character would you like to see make a return? And finally, I'd like to say a big thank you to my Flying Hellfish members. We have Timothy, One Drama Boy, Steve, Charlie, Sean, Stefan, Robert, Ashley, Glenford, Devin, Gadrak, Stephen, Edward, Anthony, Nicola, Jeffrey, Abby, Dominic, Cody, Chaz, Jeff, Gil, Shadu, Murray, Paul, Henry, Frank, Luca, Zed, Omer, Eric, Thomas88, Samantha, Rayleigh, Laurent, Brendan, Shivendra, Holly, Jason, Molly, Doug, Eli, David, Rachel, and Valerie.